Unboxing the Corset 2020 Welcome Decks. Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, Magic Fan. I've got another Welcome Deck unboxing video for you. I've actually created them for the last few years. Check the description for links to the previous years. Now, Welcome Decks are a great way to get started in Magic. They are free. They are given to you for free at comic shops, game stores, or San Diego Comic Con, where I got a set right here. So these Welcome Decks are great for you to get started with Magic, and then you can upgrade them, make them better, keep learning the game of Magic, keep getting better at Magic. So that means I need help from you, the community. I'm going to upgrade these decks, but I need you to vote. There's a pop-up happening on the top right corner here. Uh, go ahead and vote. Which deck should I upgrade? The white Ajani deck? The blue Mu Yangling deck? The black Soren Markov deck? The red Chandra Nalar deck? Or the green Vivian Reed deck? So vote up here uh, to tell me which deck to upgrade, and then I'll have a video for that. So these welcome decks also give you a little bit about the philosophy of what each color is. Uh, check the description to jump ahead because I'm going to read each one of these, then we'll open them. As a white mage, you know that true strength lies in cooperation. You command disciplined armies, working as one to overwhelm your enemies. Unity of purpose brings you victory. So Ajani Goldmane is the uh, figurehead of the white deck, and as you saw by the description, it's basically a lot of creatures joining together to defeat your opponent. That's one of the philosophies in white. Mu Yang Ling is the figurehead for the blue welcome deck. As a blue mage, your mind is your most powerful weapon. You control the battlefield through illusion, always thinking three steps ahead of your foe, Superior knowledge determines your victory. Okay, that's the nice way of saying that blue magic is all about control. Controlling your opponent, denying them resources, denying their creatures from attacking you and such. That's what blue is all about. Next we've got Sorin. He is the figurehead for the black deck. As a black mage, you seek power at any price. Every advantage comes at a cost, and you will sacrifice whatever is necessary to control the forces of death and darkness. Boundless ambition drives your victory. All right, so black is a lot about the creatures of the night, uh, zombies, demons, draining life, uh, you know, vampiric stuff. So black decks win by summoning the dark forces, in short, but also getting to victory at any cost. Red is headed by Chandra, and we have here, as a red mage, you live for freedom. You revel in the chaos of battle, where fire is your weapon and your inspiration. Beautiful, powerful, impossible to control. Elemental fury fuels your victory. In a red deck, you're often going to channel the forces of uh, fire and lava and direct damage. You're going to burn your opponent's creatures or, or burn them directly to victory. And lastly, one of the newer Planeswalkers, Vivian. She's the figurehead for the green deck. As a green mage, you command the forces of natural world, and the power of life itself fuels your magic. Summon enormous beasts to trample your opponents on your way to victory. So whereas the white deck is concerned with small creatures banding together, to help you win, the green deck is all about big creatures stomping all over your opponent. So those are the various philosophies of each of the colors. As a newer player, you might want to pick one of the colors and stick with it to learn the basics of magic. And then as you get more advanced, you can combine colors. Maybe I like the, the small creature plus direct damage approaches, so I will combine these two to create a Boros-themed deck. That would be white and red. Maybe I will go with the death and destruction of black magic plus the destructiveness of red to create a Rakdos-themed deck. Again, you'll learn all of these 
various guild names as you play. But let's open up each one of them, see what's in them, talk a little bit of strategy. But don't forget to vote at the top over here to tell me which of the monocolored decks should I upgrade. I will then have a video where I go into detail upgrading one of these decks to make it even better. All right, let's start with a Johnny. I have not opened these yet, but I know basically what's in them from previous years. There will be a 30 card fully playable monocolored deck from the particular Planeswalker color. So this will be white and it will then have a random other color with it. This one came with red, completely random. So if you combine both of these together, you will get a Boros deck. The best of white plus the best of red. But let's open up the white deck first. Now, of note, at the back, you also have some informational cards. How to cast spells. It tells you about mana costs. How, how uh, this is a five casting cost spell because you need one green, one white mana, and three more of those colors or any colors or also colorless. But you can get to that complex stuff later. Then we've got, uh, this is your battlefield. You want to put creatures here, lands here. This is your hand, etc. And then when it's your turn, you will begin and do these things. You will have a main phase, a combat phase, a main phase again, and then you end your turn. And then there's discover more magic, learn mtg.wizards.com, or scan this uh, QR code to go there. So some informational cards that are in every deck, those will not vary. Then what you've got are a variety of cards that range in rarity and therefore power. This is Sarah's Guardian. It's a rare card. So rare and mythic rare cards are usually better than common and uncommon cards. For six mana, you get an angel, five, five, that flies. So your opponent must have flyers to deal with this creature. Plus it's got vigilance. It will not tap when it attacks, so it'll continue to defend you. And other creatures you can draw have vigilance. So when you've got this angel on the battlefield, your other creatures also have vigilance. Very nice. That's the rare card. Then we're going to have some amount of land. 1, 2, 12, 13. I just wanted to get the lands out of the way here. We've got 13 lands. All of these generate white mana to help you fuel your spells. Concordia Pegasus, 2 mana for a 1-3 that flies. Has the Officer, 3 mana for a 3-2 that when it enters the battlefield, your other creatures get a plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. So make things uh, stronger for one turn after this is summoned. Inspiring Captain, 4 mana, 3-3. Three, three. It does the same thing, but it gives you a bigger creature. Dawning Angel, 5 mana, 3-2. It's also a flyer, and when it enters, it gives you 4 life to keep you ahead of the game. Inspiring Charge, an instant that for 4 mana, it will instantly give all your creatures plus 2, plus 1 until end of turn, making them stronger, better, faster. Pacifism, lock down your opponent's creature so that it cannot attack or block for only two mana. This is a classic card that's been in the world of magic for over 20 years, literally. Ironclad Crovod, four mana for a two five, so it's a great blocker. Glaring Aegis, uh, one mana, enchantment aura, it attaches to your creature. When it enters, tap target creature and opponent controls, and your enchanted creature gets plus one, plus three. So it locks down their creature for a turn, and it makes your creature stronger for the attack. Another has the officer. Now here's a pro tip. Decks are often better when they have more than one of the same card. You can have up to four of any one card besides basic lands in a magic deck. So having two has the officers means you have more of a chance to draw it and get its little ability here to make your creatures bigger. Show of Valor. Uh, for two mana, target creature gets plus two plus four until end of turn, so it makes your creatures even stronger at instant speed. So that means when your opponent is coming at you, you can cast this spell on their turn to make your creature even stronger and take out their creature attacking. Loyal Pegasus, for one mana, you get a two one. So this is pretty cool. This is an uncommon card. A lot of these others that I was showing were common cards, less powerful. 
uncommon is a little bit more powerful, but not as powerful as that rare card right there. And it's a 2-1, but it cannot attack or block alone. So you have to have more creatures that also attack or block in order for this to be effective. Trusted Pegasus, a common at 2-2 for 3 mana, flying. And when this attacks, it basically gives another creature flying. It jumps on its back, basically. Siege Mastodon, 5 mana, 3-5. So it's just got a lot of uh, toughness. It is able to absorb a lot of damage. Another Dawning Angel, so two of them in the deck to be a little bit more guaranteed that you can summon this creature and get its capabilities. And then two of these Caracals, so for three mana you get a 3-1, a big old cat that's not that strong, it'll get killed kind of easily, but it does three damage with its claws. And you've got two of them ready to then pounce on your opponent. So the standout card of this deck is the rare, and most of the decks are like this. They've got a lot of uh, fine commons and a few good uncommons, and then a good rare to really close the game off. So that was the white deck. The red deck that also came with this, again, this will be the same red deck when we get to Chandra's deck. So they're all the same in that whatever color um, is on the box, you will definitely get that deck plus then a random other deck. Let's open the red deck. Once again, you get the two how to play cards, then you get the rare of the deck, the rare bomb of the deck. This is another classic card. This one's been around 25 years in the world of magic. This is a 5-5 five, five for 6 mana at flying. So you better, the opponent better have a big old flyer to block this. But wait a minute, you pay 1 red mana and it gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. This can become a 6-5. Well, if you have a monocolored deck, you paid 6 mana to summon this. If you pump all those 6 mana back into the dragon, this becomes an 11-5 flyer. Your opponent better have a blocker for that. Good old Shivan Dragon. You've got your lands, that should be 13 of them. Goblin Assailant, a plain old 2-2 creature, does 2 damage, takes 2 damage for 2 mana. This is what we would call a bear, because one of the earliest 2-2 two, two for 2 creatures was the Grizzly Bear 25 years ago. This is a red bear then. Fearless Halberdier, 3 mana, 3-2. Three, so it does a lot of damage, doesn't absorb very much, but for 3 mana. Dagger Sail Aeronaut, 4 mana, 3-2. This one's interesting. It has flying, but only on your turn. So when you attack, this can fly. On their turn, it doesn't fly. More of these lands, some beautiful art on them. That's one of my favorite arts. Fire Elemental, another classic 25-year-old card. For 5 mana, you get a 5-4 to burn everything. Another mountain, Infuriate. 1 red mana, instantly give your creature plus 3, plus 2. Chandra's Outrage. Uh, for 4 mana at instant speed, you can deal 4 damage to target creature and 2 to that creature's controller. So wipe out one of their creatures and do damage right to the opponent. Nice. Mountain, mountain, volcanic dragon. I love this little guy. 6 mana, 4-4 four, four, flying haste. So as soon as you summon it, it can start attacking. Uh, this is an uncommon card. So once you get to that 6 mana, you attack right away with a 4-4. Four, four. Act of Treason, so vicious. 3 mana. Gain control of target creature uh, until end of turn, and it gives it haste, basically, so it can uh, attack. You steal your opponent's creature and attack them with it. You have to give it back to them at the end of the turn, but you attack with their creature. Very nice. More lands. Engulfing Eruption. Four mana sorcery. You can only cast this on your turn. Deals five damage to target creature, so one of their big old pesky creatures is totally fried. Another Aeronaut. Another Halberdier. Mountain. Goblin Smuggler, this is a hilarious card, 3 mana, for a 2-2 with haste, it can attack right away. Or, tap, another target creature with power 2 or less can't be blocked. So you've got another creature, tap this creature, and the other creature is unblockable. The best part is the flavor text. I am but a humble traveler, I have no taste for sneakery and thiefiness. Hilarious art. Mountain, Maniacal Rage, a 2 casting cost. Enchantment, that gives your creature plus two plus two, but then it can no longer block. So you better get your creature attacking over and over. Shock, classic, one red mana to deal two damage to any target. So deal two damage to their creature, to the opponent, or their planeswalker. Mountain, Rubble Belt Recluse, five mana, six five. 
and attacks each combat if able. So every time it's your turn, when it's your combat, this must attack. No holding back to defend you. It has to attack. And then uh, one more mountain and one more goblin. So another red bear. The rare of the red deck was the Shivan Dragon. Next up, let's open up Mu Yang Ling's deck, the blue focused deck. So, ooh, this one came with something that the other one didn't. Let's look at that first. Uh, tips for learning and teaching magic, learning to play, teaching a friend. If you want to read what this says, maybe pause the video here. But this is basically telling you how to play magic a little bit. Look through your deck, start playing right away, keep it simple. And welcome here, the deck is an invitation to join. So very cool, it wasn't in the other one, which I'm surprised. They're all consistent, but a little bit of info for you. And this particular one came with a blue and red deck. So we got the red deck again. If you were to combine these two, this would be an Izzet deck from the Izzet League. So we already know what this deck is going to be. I'm not going to open it again. But this is a brand new one. So uh, let's open the blue focused deck. The rare for this deck is a six casting cost 5-5 five, five flyer. So it'll be able to take a lot of damage and do a lot of damage for six mana. When it enters the battlefield, you may return target creature and opponent controls to their hand. So if they have their own 5-5, five, five, um, when you summon this, this will get bounced back to their hand. Again, those tricky blue mages controlling the battlefield. Got these lands, beautiful art on them as usual. Coral Merfolk. Here is a 2-2, two -two, gives you a 2-1, not quite a bear. It's a little bit weaker. Cloud Kins here. This one's great. Three mana, two, one flyer. So it'll do damage in the air, but it'll also bring with it a card. You can draw one more card from your deck to outpace your opponent. Snapping Drake, four mana, three, two flyer. Cool art. Islands. Now, magic has run out of ways to depict islands a long time ago, so sometimes you get waterfalls. Befuddle for three mana, target creature gets minus four, minus zero until end of turn. So their big ol' five five coming at you becomes a one five until end of turn. And you get a card, it draws you a card. Beautiful island, Phantom Warrior. This is a card that's been around a long time as well. Uh, three mana, two two. Uh, Phantom Warrior can't be blocked. So this is an illusion warrior that is unblockable. Air Elemental for 5 mana, you get a 4-4 four, four Flyer Classic that's been around since the beginning. Island Island, Captivating Gyre, uh, 6 mana Sorcery Uncommon, return up to 3 target creatures to their owner's hand. So bounce back stuff back to the opponent. Sleep Paralysis, when Sleep Paralysis enters the battlefield, tap Enchanted Creature and it doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. So it locks down one of their creatures. Very nice. Another Drake. More islands. Winged words. Uh, for three mana, uh, you draw two cards. But if you control any flying creatures, it costs one less. Blue is very good at flying creatures, so this deck will help you cast this card even faster. Unsummon. Classic card. For one blue mana at instant speed, return target creature to its owner's hand. So after they've spent all of their mana summoning their big creature at the end of their turn, instantly return it back for them to lose it and have to cast it again. Island. Fortress Crab. Uh, four mana, one six. Now I learned directly from Gavin Verhey, uh, one of the people that works at Magic, that this card was designed so that it is a combination of rolling two d6 uh, dice. Uh, you can get a 1 or a 6. So just a little bit of interesting trivia for a big old blocking crab. Island. Moat Piranha 3-3. Three, three. Defender. This creature cannot attack, so it can only stick around to help block. It cannot actually attack. And this is for 2 mana. Octo Prophet. For 4 mana, you get a 3-3. Three, three, and when it enters, you scry 2. So this is an interesting mechanic. You basically look at the top two cards coming from your library. You can keep them at the top or uh, put them at the bottom of your library if you don't actually need them. If there's two more lands coming that you don't need, you scry them away. So thank you, Octoprophet. Island Frostlinks, 
3 mana 2-2, two, two, and then this taps your opponent's creature, and it doesn't untap for one turn on their turn, so you lock down their creature. Island, another Coral Merfolk, and then the two How to Play cards. The big rare for the blue deck is the Riddle Master Sphinx. Once again, my particular one also came with a red deck, which we've already opened, so moving on. Black deck. This comes with the black deck, of course, and a white deck. We've already opened the white one, so we know what's in there. Let's open the black deck. Grave Waker is the rare. For six mana, you get a 5-5 five, five flyer. Again, your opponent better have a big blocker or else it's going to do a lot of damage. Then you have an activated ability for seven mana. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So if one of your uh, little evil creatures has died, you can pay that mana to keep bringing it back and casting it over and over. Swamp. Walking Corpse is a black bear. For two mana, you get a 2-2 two, two in black. Barony Vampire, three mana, you get a 3-2. This is similar to the Halberdier that we saw in the red deck. Sometimes there are functionally similar reprints in various colors. Bartisan Bat, four mana, three one flyer. So do a lot of damage in the air um, if you can't if the opponent can't deal with it. Swamp, swamps, dark remedy, two mana, instant. Target creature gets one three until end of turn. Similar to another card we saw before, at instant speed, make your cards. Make your creatures stronger. Swamp, Feral Abomination, 5-5 five, five for 6 mana. Well, if that's not enough, it's got Death Touch. So you'll be able to kill anything that uh, gets damaged by it. So if your opponent has a 7-7 seven, seven creature, our Thrall can actually kill it. Because Death Touch kills anything that it touches. Murder. For 3 mana, destroy target creature. So any of your opponent's creatures are totally done for. Unless they have uh, indestructibility, but let's not go there. Swamps, Gravedigger for four mana. When it enters the battlefield, return a creature from your graveyard back to your hand. So it brings back your previously dead creatures and gives you a 2-2 a two -two creature. Disentomb for one black mana sorcery. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So again, bring back stuff from the graveyard. Black is very good at that, reanimating stuff for them to fight again and again. Agonizing Siphon, amazing art on this. Four mana, it deals three damage to any target and you gain three life. So three damage to your opponent's creature, your opponent themselves, or their planeswalker, and then you gain life. Another Barony Vampire, Skeleton Archer. 4 mana, 3-3. Three, three. When it enters, it deals 1 damage to anything, so it shoots a little arrow at them. And the creature is funny because it's named exactly what it is. It's a Skeleton Archer. Swamp, Bog Stomper. Look at this cute little guy. Uh, 6 mana gives you a 6-5, so a lot of damage and absorbing a lot of uh, damage as well. Swamps, Walking Corpse, another Black Bear. Oh, there's 3 of them in the deck. Interesting. Swamp, uh, two Bartisans, Swamp, and a Disfigure. Amazing art on that. For one black mana, instantly give your opponent's creature minus two, minus two, probably killing it or finishing it off after something, uh, one of our creatures damages it a little bit. And we've got the two how to plays. And so the bomb rare of the black deck is the Grave Waker. Well, we already know that the red deck is the Shiv and Dragon, so I'll skip that. This also has that welcome thing there, and this is blue here. So this is exactly like the blue deck that I opened, and that can happen. Uh, so combining this would be a uh, another Is It deck. Oh, I forgot to mention the the black and white combination would be an Orzhov deck, or the black and red would be a Rakdos deck. So, same red as before, I won't open it. And lastly, the green deck. This has uh, a green deck plus a black deck, so together that would be a Golgari deck. And let's open the green deck. The bomb rare is a six casting cost, eight, eight. So, you're, we're not kidding when we say that uh, green decks are all about the big creatures. You get a big elephant with trample. 
This creature can deal excess combat damage to the player or planeswalker it's attacking. So if your opponent blocks with a 1-1, there's 7 damage left over that hits the opponent. Normally, every other card that an opponent blocks, if you block with a 1-1, all 5 damage gets absorbed by that creature. Well here, um, trample damage goes through. And wait a minute, your other creatures also get trample. Excellent. Forest, beautiful. Uh, I love the art on that forest, so natural. Woodland Mystic, 2 mana, 1-1, one, one, you add a green mana. So this is what you would call a mana dork. It's a creature that can attack or block, but it can also create mana. So that's mana acceleration or mana ramp so you can get to your bigger creatures faster. That's what green is pretty good at. Bristling Boar, 4-3 four, for 4 mana, cannot be blocked by more than one creature. So your opponents cannot combine up their creatures to take this one out. It can only be blocked by one creature at a time. Centaur Cursor, 3 mana for a 3-3. Three, three. Forest. Mammoth Spider, 5 mana, 3-5. This has reach. It can also block flying creatures. So uh, whatever's coming in the air, this mammoth can reach up and block it. Forest Vort Claw, hilarious. 6 mana for a 7-7. Seven, seven. Usually the amount of mana relates to how much the power and toughness is at a basic minimum. Well, for 6 mana, you get a discount on a big ol' 7-7. Seven, seven. So again, when you have your mana dorks like that Woodland Mystic, it can help you get to these bigger creatures even faster. Well, what if you've got a little creature and you want to turn it into a big creature? Titanic Growth for 2 mana gives any of your creatures plus 4, plus 4 until end of turn. So your lowly 1-1 one, one becomes a 5-5 five, five until end of turn, out of the blue. Forests. Overcome 5 mana. Creatures you control get plus 2, plus 2 and gain trample until end of turn. So make your whole squad big and give them trample to make all that damage go through and get to the opponent. Oaken form. 3 mana enchantment. Give your creature a plus 3, plus 3 permanently. Forest. Canopy Spider, 2 mana, 1, 3, and it has reach, so spiders often have this motif of being able to reach and stop flying creatures. This one's a little weak, but for only 2 mana, uh, it can take out, uh, it can at least hold at bay some other flyers. Another Courser, Plummet, okay, well, speaking of flying creatures, how about just destroy it right away, instant speed. They, oh, they just spent all their mana to summon their... Uh, their riddle form Sphinx. Whoops, sorry, it's dead instantly. Forest. Rabid Bite. This one's interesting. For two mana, target creature you control deals tar deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. So your own particular aggressive mammoth can then deal damage directly to one of your opponent's creatures, getting them out of the way, and then it can still attack. Cool. Forest. Prize Unicorn. Look at this beautiful art on this beautiful... Unicorn with beautiful hair. 4 mana, 2-2. Two, two. All creatures able to block prize unicorn do so. Ah, man. So when this attacks, all of your creatures must combine together to block it. Another spider forest. Frilled Sandwalla. This little lizard for 1 green mana comes in as a 1-1. One, one. But then you can pay 2 mana one time to make it into a 3-3. Three, three, one time per turn. So you can get a 3-3 three, three on turn 2. That's what green man is all about. Forest. Healer of the Glade. One green mana, one two. When it enters the battlefield, you gain three life. So this helps uh, strengthen you and gives you a pretty okay blocker. The rare of the green deck is the Aggressive Mammoth. So that was an overview of all of the welcome decks. Once again, you can get these decks for free at various conventions, at local game stores, comic shops, and such. You should be able to ask for them, and they will gladly give you at least one. If they're nice enough, they should give you two so that you and your friend can play. You'll then be able to partake in games of magic, learn how it works, battle each other, make them kiss, and just get better and better at magic. Once again, these decks can be combined together, so if I get good at the black deck, I can then uh, combine it with the accompanying deck to get the best of both. 
As a pro tip, the more of one card that you have, the better, more consistency. The more rares and uncommon cards you have also, the better. Common cards do their job, but uncommon and rare and mythic rare cards do even better. What's a mythic rare? Well, it's one of these cards in orange that often has an even stronger ability than the rest. This is a Planeswalker. This did not come with these decks. It came with the Planeswalker deck. That is the next level that you want to upgrade to after you get welcome decks. This is a 60 card deck that has even more things such as a Planeswalker, a Johnny inspiring leader. But that'll be a discussion for another video. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment. Tell me down there in the comments what you would do to upgrade these decks. Don't forget to vote on which deck should I upgrade and I'll have a new upgrade video for you. Check me out on Patreon, patreon.com slash vmcampos. You get a lot of exclusives there. If you follow, you will keep up to date with everything that I do. But if you become a patron for as little as a dollar, you get access to all these exclusive things that I do, such as longer videos, deck techs, how-tos, etc. If you go to the $2 range, I will actually mail you vintage magic cards from my collection. No, not a Black Lotus for you to keep and enjoy and use in your decks. This has been VM Campos, and I'll see you in Sheep.